Hey guys, welcome to Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews. I am your host, Boise, and this is Raw Review for the week. Do we have a PAX episode? Indeed we do, guys. We have big announcements for WrestleMania. We have big, big stipulations added to matches and so much more. So with this all said and done, let's get straight on with it. Let's hit the music. So first things first, we started off the show this week with the huge, huge announcement that the first time ever in WrestleMania history, the final match of WrestleMania will be the women's match. That's right, Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship. Huge news, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. I know there's a lot of people who who don't care or just don't want to care about women's wrestling. But for me, I actually enjoy women's wrestling. So I think this is exciting. I can't wait to see Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair steal the show. Because Ronda Rousey's not going to do that, let's be honest. She's a good wrestler, but she's not at the same level as Becky and Charlotte, is she? Uh, and we started off with the Raw Women's Champion, uh, Ronda Rousey. She... Again, this heel persona. I enjoy certain bits of it, but the majority of the time I am like, I honestly don't care what Ronda Rousey needs to say. And she came out, she said, you're welcome, and all this lot. And she cut a, you know, definite Ronda Rousey heel promo. Uh, she got on with, she went, I don't know what the Beat the Clock Challenge match is. It sounds like a piece of crap to me, but let's just get on with it. Then Becky comes out. Becky cuts a hell of a promo stating that, hey, Ronda, your title reign has been floundering for some time. The only reason we're in the main event for WrestleMania is because of me, the man. I have made you actually relevant to WrestleMania. And I agree, Becky Lynch is the reason Ronda Rousey is anywhere near this main event. Charlotte and Becky Lynch are the main reasons, and they deserve that. Charlotte comes out as well. She cuts a quick promo. It's a good promo from Charlotte being a heel tactics as she is. I like Charlotte Flair being a heel. She's very, very talented on the mic. And they do, you know, her and Becky are just so good at their chemistry against each other verbally. Char Again, Ronda Rousey just felt like a third wheel in this title match. Uh, then it was the Riot Squad who came out. The Riot Squad are going to break down into three matches. So we started off with Ronda Rousey versus Sarah Logan. Uh, this was a very, very quick match where Ronda Rousey beat Sarah Logan in 1 minute 25 minutes. That's the time set for the rest to go. Charlotte Flair then took on Ruby Wright, the leader of the right squad, and she unfortunately couldn't beat the buzzer. It looked like Ron uh, Ruby Wright was about to tap out, but she didn't. The buzzer went, and Charlotte couldn't take it. She kicked Becky in the face. Uh, that allowed Liv Morgan to get trying to get her upper hand, but it really didn't do anything in that perspective. Uh, Becky did manage to flip Liv onto her back and get the pinfall before. I think it was like seven seconds left to go and Becky winning beat the clock. These are all very quick matches and it was good. For me, it didn't add anything to their feud. Again, WrestleMania has been really more carried by Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Ronda Rousey, again, feels like a third wheel. And the Riot Squad just feel like they've been absolutely demolished, apart from Ruby Riot, who's the only one who's kind of been protected in this segment. So, for me, I'm going to give this a two and a half star. I think the big announcement really was huge, but everything else, apart from Becky Lynch, was mediocre. Next up, we had a handicap match. Uh, this was Finn Balor taking on Bobby Lashley and Jinder Mahal. Uh, re reason it's uh, not going to be Leo Rush because he's not medically cleared to, to compete. So Jinder Mahal took his spot. And this was a really quick match yet again. Uh, Finn Balor pinning the extra man that was Jinder this time. This was, again, it just like, oh, I've seen this before. We've just inserted Jinder into Leo Rush's spot. But for the majority, Finn really just controlled the mo most of the match. Yes, Bobby Lashley and Jinder Mahal at the start used a numbers game. But when the referee kicked one of them out and they had to tag, it really was Finn's time to just kind of beat the crap out of Bobby Lashley. He tagged out. Finn, he really dominated Jinder Mahal. And he got the victory. This allows now that Finn Balor is going to have a WrestleMania match against Bobby Lashley 
for the Intercontinental Championship. How do I feel? I think we've seen this match before. We're so used to seeing Finn Balor having the numbers game against him. The odds against him every single time. And we kind of say, just make him demon. Let him win the belt at WrestleMania and let's get on with it. And let's get past this Bobby Lashley feud because my god, it feels like we have seen it for 10 years already. So for me, I am going to give this a 2 out of 5 stars. Next up, we had the Revival versus Alistair Black and Ricochet. Uh, this is, again, a really good match. A uh, short match, again, but it was decent enough. Revival looking very strong in this. Being outsmarted by the babyface team of Ricochet and Alistair Black was a good little bit of writing there by Creative. I really enjoyed that because usually the Revival are in ring specialists they really split the ring in two and they dominate in that perspective but this time around they got too arrogant and too cocky for their own goods before the match even started ricochet and alistair black did beat the crap out of the revival after their attack a couple of weeks back but this was a decent decent match this has to give ricochet and uh uh alistair black a opportunity at wrestlemania for the raw tag team titles because they Again, they have pinned the champions yet again. Uh, for me, very strong match. Really good little creative there for me. And Ricochet and Alistair Black getting the victory. For me, right decision. Gives them an opportunity to go out at WrestleMania to have a decent match. And don't forget, this will be great. They have a Dusty Rhodes match at TakeOver. So they will have already competed. And if they lose that anywhere, they will already be injured from the night before and they can use that into the storylines going into wrestlemania as well so for me i'm going to give this a three out of five stars i'm really excited to see where this leads with the raw tag team division next up we had drew mcintyre coming out to challenge roman reigns he already last week challenged roman he's been waiting and waiting yet nothing no word from roman he comes out again he says roman I'm waiting, it's been a week, it's been a long week, I want my answer for Wrestlemania. Uh, you know, but he does, he does plead with Roman to, you know, not take the challenge. He said, think about your wife and kids, they've already seen you fight for your life before, now do you want to see them, see you get beaten to, to death yet again by my hands. Uh, Roman does come out, he... Cuts a quick promo, he accepts and goes, Roman accepts, smacks Drew McIntyre and goes, you leave my wife and kids out of this. Really good little quick promo here from Roman. I think this is the right decision for Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre. It's a big type, it's a big match for Drew McIntyre. It's a big match for Roman, but Drew is that kind of competitor who can, who if Roman's not 100%, and it doesn't look like he is yet at 100%, and WWE are going to, you know, slowly bring him back into a WrestleMania match. Drew's that guy. He can carry that match and he can really help Roman through it and possibly have a decent, decent match. I really like this. Um, so I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5 stars. I think Drew, great opponent, great little quick promo from both men. Just it, It's just a marquee match straight away without a lot of build. And that's what you want for Roman's first match back. So, you know, first singles match back since defeating leukemia next up we had one half of the women's tag team championship sasha banks versus natalia yet again this is the same match which we had last week um natalia was accompanied again by beth phoenix this is definitely beth is back from retirement for for a while it looks and this was a lot better than what we got last week and i will give the credit for the women because they had a lot better match there uh, Natalia and Sasha Banks both going into their submission moves and both women really fighting. It looked like both times either woman could have tapped out and it looked like Natalia was about to tap out and then Natalia could reverse it and put it, Sasha Banks into the sharpshooter. And then what happens yet again, Natalia and Sasha Banks are interrupted in their match by none other than Tam, Mina and Nia Jax. They beat their crap out of their match ends and DQ yet again. Sasha Banks and Bailey winning the match by disqualification. Uh, but this time round, Beth Phoenix comes out and she dominates both Nia Jax and Tamina, which is great. And then what happens after that? No, pretty much Natalia and Beth Phoenix have a stare down with Sasha Banks and Bailey 
over the titles. I'm actually looking forward to this. They backstage had a quick interview with Bailey and Sasha Banks, and they stated they are going to take on anyone and everyone at WrestleMania. And it's been confirmed that we are going to have a fatal four way tag team match between Bailey, Sasha Banks, Natalia, Beth Phoenix, the Iconics, and Tamina and Nia Jax. Really cool, really cool. But the match itself, again, like I said, it was similar to last week. It was better than last week's match. But because we have seen it already, and it's very similar setup from what we got last week, I'm going to give this a 2 out of 5 stars. Next up, we had a moment of bliss, and this was Alexa Bliss, and she was trying to smooth out all the issues between Braun Strowman and the SNL guys. Um... I honestly, I know some people who, especially the American crowd, will enjoy this. But if you're not American like us over here in the UK, we don't get SNL. So these guys are celebrities. So it's like, oh, these non-wrestlers are going to be in involved in WrestleMania. And Braun and the SNL guys have a bit of a spat. Good little promo by Braun Strowman. I do like Braun for that. And he challenges both men to enter the Andre the Giant Battle Royale and to 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 clear the air and let Braun handle this like a wrestler should do in the ring. Alexa agrees with Braun and she adds them into the Andre the Giant bit. Um, I know some people, like I said, a lot of people in the states will like this um, because it's it's good for Braun. Apparently, they are big names, but. Again, if you're in the UK or outside America, you're not really going to get this kind of thing. It's not like they are big names for anyone else outside of you know North America. So for us, it's kind of like right. So Braun's going to be up some non-wrestlers. Great, that's that's going to be fun, I guess. Um, for me personally, I'm going to give this a one star. Um, I just I don't look forward to it. It doesn't really add anything for Braun, for my opinion. But that's mainly because I don't think I see these guys as celebrities like you would do in America. Next up, we had yet another rematch from last week where we saw Baron Corbin taking on Apollo Crews. Uh, again, I don't understand why we're having 50-50 uh, booking. Yes, uh, spo spoiler alert, Bro Baron Corbin pretty much won. Um, again, it, I just feel for Apollo. Apollo's a good athlete. He's a great talent in the ring. He's just not over. He's not over. So, Baron winning this match is meant to give him some momentum going into WrestleMania against Kurt. But it just really doesn't do that for me. It just feels like they've just gone, there you go. 50-50 booking. What could happen at WrestleMania? And no one really cares. I think so many people are so disappointed with Baron Corbin being Kurt Angle's final opponent. And we're getting a lot of these dream matches uh, on TV with Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, all these names on TV. And you're just like, why are we getting these matches now on TV? But we're getting the match which no one wants at WrestleMania. Um, I'm going to give this a one and a half star. It's, Polo was great in the ring. It's just, Baron Corbin's crap. He's... He's a crap athlete in the ring. And I really, I don't feel bad for saying that. Um, he's just boring. It's just boring. Next up, we had a very strong promo by Seth Rollins and Paul Heyman. Uh, Seth Rollins talked about how he was in town. He did some meet and greets with some fans. And he was talking about slaying the beast. And he was saying that every fan who came up to him was asking and praying that Seth would beat Brock Lesnar at Wrestlemania and bring back the Universal title. Understandable. He's interrupted before he can uh, finish shouting burn it down uh, by Paul Heyman. Re again, Paul Heyman's fantastic. Again, this is Paul Heyman at his best just showing why everyone he is one of the best mic talkers to ever live. And he is a great, great manager. Uh, he really builds up this feud and both Seth and Paul Heyman just hit the right notes, uh, get the crowd really excited. It adds a little bit to this match now. I wasn't really 100% looking forward to Seth versus 
Brock Lesnar, mainly because the build-up's been its typical Brock Lesnar build-up. He's never there, and when he is there, he's not going to fight, he's not going to have a match, he's just going to probably get in the ring, beat up his opponent, or distract his opponent in their match to cost them the match. But that's typical Braun Strowman tactics. It's, it's, it's kind of like play-by-play -play booklet here by now. But Paul Heyman always adds something. He always adds spice to the match, and that's always great. And that's what they managed to do. Uh, Paul Heyman's walking off after he cuts a fantastic promo. Seth Rollins runs up to him. Paul just falls onto the ground, saying, I think you're going to win, and all this sort of really, really coward heel kind of thing. And Seth just goes, I'm going to answer the prayers. I'm going to burn. It, it gets the crowd to chant, burn it down with him. And it's just fantastic. I really like this promo. I'm going to give this a three out of five stars. Both men just kicking ass in it. Next up was the match I was most looking forward to all night. And that was Kurt Angle versus Samoa Joe. Uh, first time ever in WWE, but a great rivalry. And they mentioned the rivalry, saying this, this, this is Kurt, one of Kurt's biggest rivalries outside of WWE. So it kind of like indication that TNA does exist in some way. Um, but, ah, man, the crowd really, I think the crowd enjoyed this. And I did as well. I enjoyed it enough, but it just shows you why... Kurt needs to retire. Samoa Joe was definitely the more dominant, more athlete kind of character in this match, uh, where he had no respect. Best thing about this, before the match even started, Samoa Joe's promo just absolutely stating he's going to put uh, Kurt Angle to sleep before he gets to WrestleMania. Uh, just, you know, because if this is the last time, I'm glad I'm going to be the one to beat the crap out of you. Um, which is always good. Samoa Joe is always good on the mic. And he just makes it feel, again, a more interesting match. Uh, the crowd did chat, start chatting TNA. Samoa Joe gives them that grin like, nah, don't be stupid. And then continues the match. Uh, Kurt Angle tried the ang ankle slam a few times, yet Joe kept on getting back up each and every time. This was just showing that Samoa Joe has taken these moves so many times. He knows how each man works. Uh, it was clean a clutch time. Angle manages to get Joe onto the ground, gets him down for free, for the free count, just managing to survive. But a really good match, really, really good. I enjoyed both men's uh, abilities in this. It just, again, it shows that, yes, Angle has lost a bit, of, or quite a bit of pace. Uh, but it just shows you, tomorrow Joe is just dominant. It does protect Joe a little bit because Angle had to go to last resorts to try and get this victory. Uh, but... Really good build up for Kurt Angle's final match to WrestleMania, uh, having all these dream ma final match opponents. But again, does it need to be Baron Corbin? Could we not get someone really good to be his final opponent? Um, but yeah, Joe's face just said it all. It was I I did enjoy this. Um, I'm going to give this a three, a three out of five stars. Really much a fun match to watch. Next up we had Triple H uh, and he had a letter from Batista. Batista stated he will not go to Wrestlemania in a week's time if his last and final demand isn't made. Uh, this was great. Triple H had a fantastic promo. Yeah, yeah. This just shows you how much of a veteran Triple H is when he can just come out, cut a promo, struggle with an envelope and yet still get the crowd to cheer for him. Um, he says, I'm working this envelope. Just loves it. I love it when you do, when something like that, where a botch is happening, a mistake's happening, and yet the wrestler just makes a joke about it, and the crowd just goes with it. It's, it's always good. Um, he's reading the letter. He goes, and he, he's just like, I, "Give me what I want. What I really, really want. I wanna. I wanna. I wanna." Uh, started singing the Spice Girls, and people started singing with Triple H with that as well. Um, then he got really serious. He goes, "Long-winded lawyer speech." But let's let's break it down. Batista will only wrestle at WrestleMania if I put my career on the line. So if I lose, I will not compete in this ring ever again. I like this statement. I like the stipulation. It's now no heart holds bar match with the stipulation of if Triple H does lose, he will never wrestle again in WWE. That, yeah, career match. Like it, career is always exciting. It adds that extra little spice. It again adding more to the Triple H Batista match. They can't do a lot with each other because of obviously Batista's scheduling. Um, but this really is building up to be one of the biggest matches at WrestleMania. And yeah, Triple H was fantastic in this promo yet again. 
I'm going to give this a score of 3 out of 5. Again, really enjoying the build up for Triple H versus Batista. Last but not least, we had a last man standing. This was our main event. Um, and it was Drew McIntyre versus a man who apparently is never showing up on TV yet again, according to um, certain reports. Uh, Dean Ambrose. Yeah, a before Raw last night. I was getting stuff on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, Dean Ambrose is never going to be on TV or at WrestleMania. And what happens? He's in the main event of Raw. Shows you what these guys know, really, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah. Really, I like this. It was a, it, I like the build-up. Didn't like the match. Um, the match was hard-hitting. Drew McIntyre and Dean Ambrose can really, really just kind of destroy each other. And it looks really good. Drew looks like a psychopath. Uh, Kendall Stick smashing... Dean Ambrose in the chest, you saw the, literally you saw the markings on Dean's chest. Uh, it was broken, he started trying to get the kendo stick into Dean's eye, which again, savage ICW kind of match there for me, which again, I like. Um, but then the realisation, two minutes into the match you go, Dean's going to lose, because Drew's completely controlling the whole match. And Dean gets the table, you go, Dean's going through the table, what happens, Dean goes through the table, gets back up, Claymore kick, Drew McIntyre wins the match. Um, yeah, yeah, I I like that, you know, Dean's putting over Drew, and, but he doesn't, again, it's now getting to the stage where fans are like, I want to see Dean Ambrose on TV, but I don't want to see that Dean Ambrose constantly lose, and it's annoying the crap out of me that every. I'm hoping this is all a massive work, and then uh, they're gonna have one more match before WrestleMania, and Dean does win. It's like, oh my god, shock value kind of thing. But right now, it's just again the fans. I think are starting to turn to a little bit like we don't need to see Drew versus Dean again, ever again for a long time. Um, I'm going to give this match a two out of five stars, mainly because. It was hard hitting, it was impressive with the, the kendo stick stuff, but again, we'd seen these two go at it like a, you know, false count anywhere, no DQ match, and that was hard hitting enough, and this last man standing match was, again, very similar to that, but again, the, the result was exactly the same, and I think fans are just like, we're sick of seeing Dean lose to Drew McIntyre now. And there you go, guys. That was Raw for this week. What did I think? I think the promos were fantastic. I think a lot of it, a lot of it was very similar to what we got last week. And I think that really kind of lowered down the show. Uh, we've seen a lot of these type of matches before. Especially the Finn Balor handicap match. Natalia and Sa Sasha Banks' match being interrupted yet again. Apollo versus Baron Corbin match. Again, we had seen... The best bit about the whole show was definitely the Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre promo, Paul Heyman, Seth Rollins promo, and Kurt Angle versus Samoa Joe. That was really good. And Triple H's promo as well. Those those were the best parts about Raw this week. Everything else kind of just felt, uh, yeah, just, we got to have a lot of content. There was a lot of content, but a lot of it was just not up, to, up there to be, you know, building up to WrestleMania, in my opinion. So I'm going to give this week's episode of Raw a two and a half star out of five i think that's a fair score but what was your favorite part about raw this week like is leave it in the comments below and if you do like our videos don't forget to like subscribe and press that bell to keep notified and if you want to follow us on the old twitter you can do it's at smack talk youtube that's a u and a tube and if you want to follow me on the old twitter it's at boise 88 and i'll see you guys next time on smack talk wrestling reviews